Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by HelloFresh. In 1989, Tim Burton's Batman released a massive commercial success and a good deal of critical acclaim. I wasn't alive in 1989, but from what I understand, the movie felt totally inescapable. Its iconic logo was all over hats, lunchboxes, and just about everything else. It was the single biggest hit of the year, outgrossing Lethal Weapon 2 and even the third Indiana Jones film. So of course, Hollywood took notice. And then something really weird happened. I'm hardly the first person to mention this, but there was this strange phenomenon where, instead of looking to other popular superheroes, studios started going hard on old pulp characters from the 30s and 40s. Movies like The Shadow and The Phantom. Right in the middle of that trend was a project that started gaining steam in 1992, The Green Hornet. That character, created for the radio in 1936, actually predates Batman and Superman, and has gone through many incarnations through the years. Going from a drama people would listen to in their living rooms, to comic books, film serials, and TV. For a time, The Green Hornet was everywhere. But the 1992 project turned out to be a different story. It remained in development hell for the rest of the 90s and most of the 2000s. George Clooney was going to star in it, then Greg Kinnear. Then it really looked like it was going to happen about 10 years later, with Kevin Smith attached to write and direct, and Jake Gyllenhaal attached as the lead. In the end, nothing was working, and the project seemed doomed to failure. Until Seth Rogen and his writing partner Evan Goldberg got involved promising to go in a very different direction with the character. What we got was not great, even Seth Rogen himself is happy to admit as much, but as someone with a lot of fondness for heroes from the golden age of comics and radio, as you can probably guess from my channel name, it's always been a movie I've wanted to talk about. The Green Hornet has all the ingredients of a fun movie, and in general, I think there's some underrated aspects to this character, and especially his universe. So let's talk about what went wrong. And now, to protect the rights and lives of decent citizens, rides the Green Hornet. One thing that's been an interesting issue for the Green Hornet since at least the 1966 TV series is that Kato, technically the sidekick, is just a lot more interesting than our lead character. In that series, Kato is played by Bruce Lee, who basically stole every scene he was in and became the breakout star. And I mean, of course he did, he's Bruce Lee. But ever since that show, people coming up with new Green Hornet material have kind of had to navigate the fact that the lead, generally Britt Reid, a young newspaper tycoon, is just not as cool or compelling as his sidekick. And it's here that I think the 2011 film actually came up with a fun idea. Lean into that concept and make Britt Reid a spoiled rich kid who only gets to be a superhero because he's extremely wealthy and searching for a purpose. Sure, that's not staying true to the characters we knew him, but I think it's a perfectly good direction to go in for an action comedy. If I had one big problem with this movie though, it's that it doesn't really commit to its own concept enough to be all that interesting or subversive. Britt Reid, as shown in this film, is an incredibly unlikable character with almost no redeeming qualities. He's a lazy rich guy who, feeling bored and directionless after his father's death, decides to use Kato's tech to roll into dangerous situations he knows nothing about and just like, straight up murder people. He's also really stupid, constantly sexually harassing his assistant, played by Cameron Diaz, and is just generally really unlikable. I'm not saying, oh, he's the lead of the film, so he needs to be an upstanding guy. I'm just saying that if that's the take on the Green Hornet that you're going with, then actually commit to it. Make this an R-rated satire that leans into what a selfish, stupid person he is, and how willing he is to commit extreme acts of violence based on nothing but suspecting someone of a crime, and build his wealth and power into the narrative. It could have been a really funny, dark movie that satirizes benevolent billionaire superheroes like Iron Man and Batman. Like maybe you don't love that idea, but at least it's an actual take. It could have given the film a unique reason to exist. Instead, it's just kind of a tepid light comedy that goes through the motions of a standard superhero film with very little flair or passion on display. It's also a really boring looking film. I'm not usually one to get really into cinematography on the channel because I won't pretend to be an expert, but something went wrong here. Michelle Gondry directed Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I know the guy knows how to shoot a movie. 
so it's pretty confusing that this is kind of shot like a CBS show. Maybe worse actually, because The Good Wife looks better than this. And to be fair, I think Seth Rogen would actually agree with many of my criticisms. In a 2013 interview on Mark Maron's podcast, Rogen said, While we were making it, it was a f***ing nightmare. And Gondry, the director, is wonderful at smaller scale stuff, but I think he did not mesh well with a blockbuster film. It was his first movie with more than a $20 million budget, and this was a $120 million budget. And we had never made an action movie, he had never made an action movie, and if there's one thing I look back on, like, what was the problem there? It was just the budget. You can't take risks. The studio wouldn't let us take risks anyway. And that makes it hard to make a movie that's exciting. The studio's fear of taking any risks is really obvious on screen, which doesn't leave the actors with much to work with after a fairly promising setup. One of the bright spots in the film though is Jay Cho as Kato. Apparently he's best known in Taiwan and China as a massive pop star. I had never heard of him before this film, but I think he's really solid here. He has a fun chemistry with Rogan, providing most of the movie's best moments, and the Kato character is, again, just by far the more interesting role. He's got a compelling backstory, invents tons of fun gadgets, and gets some of the best punchlines. The villain, played by Christoph Waltz, is a little less lucky, but I think he has his moments. Originally, the studio tried to get Nick Cage for the role. According to Rogan, he showed up to the meeting and told them he wanted to play the character with a Jamaican accent and prosthetic lips. When no one else was into it, he just abruptly left. Cage himself has said that he wanted the character to have a little more nuance and not just be a murder machine, which is a really fair criticism of the character as he exists in the final product. Waltz is a reliably good actor, and I actually really enjoy him in the opening scene. Like, James Franco is doing this really bad New Jersey accent, but it is just a fun scene. Especially when it goes on to reveal that Waltz's villain actually is really insecure about not coming off as scary or interesting. It's not much of a character, honestly, but at least Waltz is able to have a good time with it. Cameron Diaz is pretty wasted here, and even Rogan admits that she was miscast. I wish I had more to say about her, but again, there's just not that much here. And that kind of goes for this whole movie. Like, I wish I could have seen what Gondry, Rogan, and Goldberg had planned before the studio interference. Maybe it still would have been bad, but at least it would have been bad in a memorable or interesting way. What we have is a movie that feels pressured to stick to the beats of your run-in-the-mill PG-13 action movie. When this thing should have had an edge, or at least something to say about the genre. And it just doesn't. That may sound overly harsh for a passable little movie that you might find perfectly entertaining on like a lazy Sunday afternoon, but Miss Potential is frustrating, and by that metric, this might be the most frustrating film I've ever covered on the channel. Apparently, there's another reboot in development, this time from Spider-Man and Jurassic Park screenwriter David Kep. And considering that the second video I ever made was on the career of Kep, I'm interested to see what that will be like. I'm guessing it won't be a comedic take, since that's not generally what he does. If that's the case, I guess Green Hornet 2011 will always just kind of be there. A testament of what can happen to a movie when a major studio is obsessed with playing it safe. Enough! Die! Boy, die! So, my week has been a little tougher than usual because I adopted a puppy. I love her, but like all puppies, it's been a lot of work. Between her and the channel, I haven't had time for much of anything else. Thankfully, this was also the first week I got to try out HelloFresh. I didn't have much time for cooking, but HelloFresh took out all the stressful parts. Planning meals, grocery shopping, it's all super time consuming. And to be honest, I'm not much of a cook. HelloFresh solved that problem. They sent me super easy recipes and all the ingredients I needed to make them. Whether you want low calorie, carb smart, vegetarian, or meat options, they have a meal plan for you. One of my meals was the balsamic tomato and herb chicken, and the process couldn't have been easier. I even had enough for lunch the next day. Oh, and obviously it tasted great too. You don't even have to take my word for it since HelloFresh has more five-star reviews than any other meal kit. They also make it super easy to add extra meals or skip a week if you need to. Not gonna lie, this was a really well-timed sponsor for me and it's changed the way I eat. So go to HelloFresh.com and use the code 12MIDNIGHT to get 12 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com and the code 12MIDNIGHT to get 12 free meals and free shipping. 
Here's a special tip for the fellows and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.